thee in the name of the Lord. Let's get another shift. Let's get another flow that the presence of the Lord can come in this place. With another slow ring, another shift that the spirit of the Lord can come in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we welcome your presence in this place. And Father, now we come dying to ourselves, asking you to search our hearts, dear Father that you compare us, God, for the blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you told us in thy word in 1 Corinthians 11 and 31 to judge ourselves that we may not be judged. And Father, we stand on 1 John 1, 9. Father, you said that we confess our sin, you are faith, but you are just to forgive us. Then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And dear, dear Father, we love it that you said in your word in the book of Isaiah that you choose not to remember our sins no more. They are far as east is from the west. So dear God, if you so choose not to remember our sin, then who are we to allow the enemy to bring that thought back into the minds? Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the anointing God will shower down in this place. Father, that you speak through me, Lord. That you deliver me and deliver me through your people. Now, Father, we read it for the rhema word, God, that was taken from the Logos written word. Now, Father, let that word come like a hammer, God. The word that's alive and powerful and sharper than any two double edged sword that piercing even between the stun of the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow. And your word, dear Father, is the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. To give you the praise and give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. Oh, come on, clap for real. Don't just panic. It. Come on, there's warfare in your clapping. Come on, clap your hands. And while you're clapping, you might as well shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. There's victory in your shout. There's victory in your clap. Yes, God, yes, God, in this place, oh Lord, in this place, that I'm seeking for a pure heart. In this place, I'm seeking, said God, for a pure heart that's ready for me, said God. When you let go of the idol thing, yes, God, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Only the praying heart shall see me, said God. Only the praying heart, they shall see. They shall see my glory. They shall see my glory. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and all his people belong to him. He found it upon the seas. And establish upon the waters. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Those who now lift up their souls to an idol are sworn deceitfully. They may receive the blessings of the Lord and the right standing with their God of Israel. For we are the generation that seek Him, that seek His face, O Jacob. So lift up your hands, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in his place. For who is the King of glory? He is the Lord. Powerful and mighty. Mighty in your battle. 
For what are you worried for? For why are you worrying? For why are you doubting? For I am the God that you serve. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am your peace. I am Jehovah Shammah. I am your God of omnipresence. I am Jehovah Tetiskinu. I am your righteous father. I am Jehovah Makadash. I am your sanctifier, say God. I am Elohim. I am God the Father. I am God the Son. I am God the Holy Ghost. I am El Shaddai. I am God. I am God all by myself. For I am, I am said God, I am Jehovah Goba. I'm your God of war who have trained your hands to war and your fingers to fight, said God. Why are you worried? Oh, now I'm Yes, God. It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth, said God. It's in your mouth, said God. To call those things that be not as though they were, said God. It's in your mouth. Oh, now I'm Oh, God. Oh, 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 I have given you dominion power, said God, to walk upon serpent scorpion and all of the power of the enemy. And nothing and nothing shall hurt you, said God. I have a son and a boy. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, come on and clap your hands unto the Lord. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, Lord. I declare freedom reign in this place in the name of Jesus. I declare you are blessed and very highly favored in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and I decree that good things shall happen into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And the very thing that came in your prayer life, I command it to be shattered in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I call for the lifting, a lifting to the next heart. To the next dimension, huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? And I declare huh? every generational curse huh? that has been established huh? from our ancestors before our time. Huh? I command the thing huh? to be that broken in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Suicidal thoughts that have been penetrating someone's mind. And you thought that you were about to go back. It have been silent whispers of suicidal thoughts because of the circumstances that you have lived up before God. And you have made the trouble, trials and tribulation higher than the God you serve. And you have allowed the enemy to interject thoughts of suicide upon your minds. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hope I shut you. I uproot the thoughts of they are penetrating in your mind and I say live woman of God in the name of Jesus I say live in the name of Jesus oh my shot your head you spirit of death that penetrating the lady's mind I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to loose your heart in the name of Jesus yes Lord yes Lord Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Give yourself a hand clap of praise. For you made it this morning. That's the first victory of warfare. Don't you dare think Satan or attacking your body to keep you from coming to a place of the living God. 
Sometimes we take it for granted. But because you are here, that's the first victory of warfare. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. Praise God. We have trained our hands for war and our fingers to fight. Give an honor to Pastor Miller and Sister Miller. Praise God. For they are on vacation. Last time, about this time, we're praying for the healing of Pastor Miller. And it have manifest. Praise God. For the prayer of a righteous man and woman is very effective. Dunamis exuses power. That's, that, that's releasing God from the spirit realm down into this natural realm to bust a move on what the things that we go through in life. Hallelujah. And giving honor to you, new life. Praise God. Giving honor to my wife, Kelly. And my family, my son, my daughter. The God daughter, praise God. I'm looking for my mother-in-law. I guess he sneaked out. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord. It's a word where it would start off with a question that God is asking us. And then it will go from a question to a command for us to remember a thing. And then... It would be a prophetic blessing that God have already released in this church. I want to acknowledge my friend, my pastor friend, Pastor Randall and his wife, First Lady Randall. Praise God. Nice to see them. Hallelujah. It's a member here. And God have shifted him to his own church. Hallelujah. We praise God. Continue to lift him up. But the word will start with a question, said God, and it will go from a question to a command for us to remember a thing. And then he, he would like for me to release a prophetic blessing that God have already released here in the midst of us here at New Life Church of Faith. But I think because cause sometimes Satan come to get a people so spiritual complacent that we miss the move of God sometimes. And I understand whenever a prophetic word is spoken to you as an individual or to a collective body like of today, understand a prophetic word only speak to your potential. It is never spoken to the person per se, but it always speak to our potentials. Why, God? Because we have the potential to spiritually abort or spiritually miscarry that word pertaining of that heart. And this word that, that they're going to lead us to this prophetic blessing, it's going to challenge for us to have a pure heart. God is seeking in this hour a pure heart from his people. Why, God? That he can release blessing upon abundance, blessing upon us. And I don't care how long we pray, how much we pray, how long we fast, God cannot release blessing if we have a heart that is not pure. He's seeking for a pure heart. You may say, wait a minute, preacher, what, what about Mark 11 and 24 that tells us that whatsoever we desire when we pray, believe that we receive it and we sure have it. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, we can believe. Yes, that's the faith realm, the realm of believing. But yet it's still God's word from him. It's also God's word to him. And God has placed his word higher than his name. Nothing comes before. A pure heart. Matthew 5 and 8. He said, only the pure in heart shall see me. And that's a two-phase seeing. That's a sin. Yes, when we get on to heaven, when we make that great transformation, but we talking about a seeing God's hand right now in our life. This is what we're seeking, God. For you to move according to what I'm going through, God. And I need to see your hand, God, before I lose my natural mind. And God is saying, can I see that pure heart that you may see my hand? 
so that prophetic word that you will hear at the end of this service, this word that's leading up to that, I will concentrate, God will want me to concentrate on a pure heart that when the prophetic blessing is released, that heart is already dealt with. You have already heard the revelation. Now it's about the heart. So when the prophetic word is released, we can receive, eat, and gravitate towards with a spirit of expectation. And when God released this word to me, it literally had me running. I was so excited. And you're going to be so excited because it's already taken place. They have already confirmed it. Praise God. The question that God want me to ask that will start with a question then it will shift to a commandment to remember a thing to prepare us for the hearing of the prophetic blessing that have already been released in the midst of us. And the question that God want me to ask, and I understand I'm, I'm not putting ranks on nobody. Before I preach to you, the word had to first come to me. I understand that. The question is this, are you ready to meet for the master's use. Are you ready to meet for the master's use? And then it would shift to a command to remember a thing. Remember Lot's wife. So in other words, to, to break it down in terms that, 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 that's of today, in other words, he, he's asking, are you ready to meet with me that I may use and bless you before a dying world that a world can see my hand upon your life? And if so, have your heart ready and don't forget what happened to Lot's wife. Are you ready to meet with me? And if so, are you ready in heart? Turn with me, 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter. And we're going to start with the 19th verse. 2 Timothy. Second chapter, starting with the 19th verse. We're going to read to the 26th verse. Then chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. We're going to use our Bibles today. Is that, is that okay? Praise God. We're going to use our Bibles today. Second Timothy, 2 and 19 through 26. And the question God is asking, are you ready to meet for the master's use? And if so, remember Lot's wife. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Sealed with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his and everyone who confess the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Now, now before I read on, I want to take you back to that word no. That word no is not a head knowledge meant to assent of a thing. That word no is coming from intimacy. Give you an example. A lot of you know my wife, Kelly. You know her from, from being a member here at New Life Church of Faith. You know her from being a director of the choir. You may even know where she worked. You know Kelly. But I know Kelly. As her husband, I know her from intimacy. I know what makes her heart beat. You see the difference of the knowing? You know Kelly, but I know Kelly. So God is saying, I know those that are mine. Those that know my voice. Those that I can trust and they can trust me. What are you saying, God? I know those that belong to me from spending time with me in the secret place. No. I know him. I know him. Now then, in verse 20, he gives us an analogy. 
Watch this. In a large house, now he's talking about the church. In a large house, there are, there are articles not, not only of gold and silver, but also, listen to this, of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes, and some are not for noble purposes. If a man cleans himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purpose and made holy. What's the next? And ready to meet for the master's use. Now he's talking about the church. He said, there are some in the church, and my house said, God, there are some of gold, and there are some of silver. What are you saying, God? There are some with a prayer heart that I will use for my purpose. There are also some that have a heart of wood and of clay. That's a heart that is not pure. That's fun for motives that's not pure. And God said, they are the ones I cannot use for my purpose. Let's read on. 22. Now he reminding us how to keep a pure heart. He said, run. Flee. The evil desires of your youth. In other words, that thing that I deliver you from, that you were once bound, don't go back. Can I tell you something, New Life? The season of the method of the devil is this. It reminds me of, of, of when we went fishing with my daddy as a little boy. We used to fish with a fishing pole, a wooden fishing pole. It was very slow. You had to have much patience. And you bait that, that hook with a live bait. And then it came from a fishing pole to a reeling rod where you throw that line out there with an artificial bait and you begin to wind it up a little more faster. But then there's a season, and it's only for a short season according to the law. It's called snagging the fish. Now when you snag the fish, there is no bait. And most of the time, it's a three-prone hook. And I remember my cousin, he used to throw that rod out there. And he, and he all of a sudden, began to slow reel that rod in. And all of a sudden, he began to yank. Now, when you're snagging, you ain't waiting for that fish to bite. You will snag him at the moment he come close. And sometimes that fish gets snagged in the eye. Sometimes he gets snagged in the side. However way that three-prone hook can catch him, it will catch him. What are you saying, preacher? The method that Satan is using in this hour. He will first bait that hook to entice your flesh. And the moment you even surround of a thing, that's a snagging quick. In the minds of God's people. He said, flee evil desires of your youth and do what? Pursue righteousness. Now I said on last week, there are two methods of righteousness. There is a false righteousness and there is a true righteousness. False righteousness is, listen, it's measured by man, for man, to impress man. And all the only accolades you receive is for man. Now, true righteousness is a righteousness where our Heavenly Father judge our heart. And that heart that is pleasing in His sight, that's who brings the promotion from God to the one with a faithful heart. Now, now, let me tell you so what God was dealing with me on yesterday. We, we was at a men's conference. And I tell you, I have been to many men's conferences in my life. But the most powerful men's conference I have ever been to in my life was yesterday here in Danville, Illinois. Powerful. I'm talking about some real powerful men of God. I just wish I would have made this announcement here so every man can be there. It was very, very powerful. I'm talking about some real apostles, some real prophets, and not their cars, houses, and land, and not no apostles that give themselves a self-title. I'm talking about some powerful men of God. And what I was telling the Rose and Marx was there, what really got me the love that they had for one another. Wasn't no jealousy of somebody else's anointing. It was real love. 
They knew who they were in God. So therefore, why no jealous? Jesus. Real love. From real gifting. And I was sitting there. And I began to look around. I said, my God, I don't see nobody from new life. And, and these some brothers with some heavy weight. They walking heavy. I said, God, I just want to, just somebody's from new life. I can just, just make me feel a little comfortable. And I got on the phone. And I get to realize, wait a minute, I ain't got really nobody phone number. <laughs> but I had Marcus. And I called him. And thank God he came. And I felt comfortable. Then God began to speak. He said from Proverbs 18 and 16, he said, Son, a man's gift make room for, for him, and I will bring him before great men. And then suddenly he, 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 he reminded him of Luke 16 and 10. He said, If you be faithful over a little, I will trust you with a lot. Let me tell you something, and I'm mainly talking to the ministers and the deacons. Let me tell you something. There is a method from the devil that, that, that he uses to get us to move before our timing in God. What are you saying? Where you are planted, God is looking for your heart to be pure, to know how to serve. He would never carry you to your purpose without you going through a process. That's what I heard the preacher say yesterday. He said, God would never trust you over a thing till you learn how to serve under a thing. But let me tell you, and I got to say this, what I see here at New Life, and I got to be real, Satan is using, some of us against each other, what there are jealousy, and because of jealousy, there are whispers that Satan is putting in the mind, and all of a sudden, there are discouragement. Let me tell you something. If God planted you here, serve to the best of your ability, because it's only a test. To see what kind of heart that you're going to have. And if you pass that test, he said, then I will bless you and trust you with more. God ain't doing no promotion if you ain't passing the test. I said, there's a move that is called moving before your time in God. And I have seen so many ministers become shipwrecked. Because they're looking for their own platform. They're running here and there, looking for their own platform. And it's done out of the flesh. And nothing come good from the flesh. Nothing comes from the flesh. i never forget when I first came to Lunite. And I'm not going to call his name. But this man of God came up to me. He said, Danny... You serve under that man and you be faithful. He was talking about Pastor Miller. And I got to be honest, I looked at a deacon Lyles, I looked at the elder Rose, and I saw how these brothers were serving. And I got right up under that. And let me tell you something, I've been preaching since 1989. I've had three opportunities to be a pastor. Three! But I knew if I would do it, I would have done it out of the flesh. Sir, you will never go to your purpose without going through the process. And I rebuke that spirit of discouragement and those lies that Satan have put in your mind to have you running two and four looking for a platform. Whoever heard such a thing? It said, flee your evil desires of your youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a what? A pure heart. Amen. Jesus. Don't have anything to do with, listen to this, foolish, stupid arguments because you know they produce, listen to this, uh, 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 altercations. And the Lord's servant, look, look at this, must not argue. Instead, he must be kind to everybody, able to teach, not resentful. Those opposed him must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them true repentance and lead them to a knowledge of truth. And if they come to their senses and escape the trap of the devil, they will be taken captive of his will. Gods have a will, and the devil got a will. 
And we know that his will come to steal, kill, and demolish us. He come to steal our identity, come to kill our purpose and destiny in God, and ultimately come to demolish our soul and spirit in hell. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, let's, let's read on. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. Look at this. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Uh-uh, children. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without uh -uh, self-control. Brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Got a form of godliness, but don't have no anointing. They are the kind, ah, uh -uh, ladies, they are the kind who run their way into the homes and gain control over weak-willed women. Uh -uh. And the only thing I'm going to say about that woman of God, a virtuous woman of God, know when to say goodnight. And I'm going to leave it right there. Whew. Who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Verse 7. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Jesus. Are we ready to meet for the master's use? Now turn with me quickly to Revelation chapter 2. For he's seeking... A pure heart. Revelation. Let me get there. Revelation chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 20. Revelation chapter 2. Starting with verse 20. We're leading up to a pure heart to prepare ourselves for the prophetic blessing that have already been released in the midst of this body. Revelation chapter 2, start with verse 20. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerated the woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misled my servants into sexual immorality and eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I cast her on the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer, suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. Look at this. And I will cause death upon her children. Jesus. Then all the churches will know that I am he who what? Searches the hearts and the minds. Now, you're talking about that Jezebel spirit. He's talking about a spirit, a spirit that lead us as the people of God in the house of God into all kind of sexual immorality, lust, fornication, adultery, or, 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 or computer pornography, all the sexual immorality, the thing that we're facing. This is what he's talking about. That's why we got to come to true repentance. Now, now he asks, now, are you ready? Are we ready to meet for the master's use? And if so, remember what happened to Lot's wife. Okay, God, tell us what happened to Lot's wife. Now, most of us know the moral of the story. She turned into a pillar of salt. Well, let's go a little deeper. Turn with me to Genesis 19. Now, we knowing what getting ready to take place. It was a city, Solomon and Gomorrah, who had a principality hierarchy demon just hovering over that place. I understand the book of Ephesians tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, rulers of darkness, and spirit of wickedness, and heavenly realms. I understand what we live in what we call first heaven, where God lives in what we call the third heaven. Between the first heaven and the third heaven is what we call second heaven. This is where Satan is and all his hierarchies and his subordinate demons, this is where they begin to live and take place. Right here, in that, between the second heaven. Now, what Solomon and Gomorrah had over it, what they could not see in the natural, but spiritually, uh, it's a demon that is called principality that was hovering over Solomon and Gomorrah, and he had that city locked in sexual immorality. 
Understand that. That's real. That spirit had it locked. And that's why a lot of us that's in the body of Christ, we need to get together sometime and come against the spirit that's hovering over Danville. People don't, don't sell drugs. That's a sell drug. They don't kill one another because they want to kill somebody. It's a spirit working. And what we see in Solomon Gomorrah, it was a, a principality spirit, but it was that spirit released as a subordinate demon, the spirit of whoredom. The spirit of whoredom is the chief governing demon that governs all sexual morality that people do. Genesis 19. Now because of their wickedness, Abraham wanted to intercede for that city. So he began to reason with God. He started at 50 and then 45 and then 40 and 35 and 30, 25, uh, uh, 20. On down to 15 then 10. And still wasn't 10 righteous. The people in that city, their mind had such a stronghold because they kept going back to the sin and Satan had their mind locked. And they couldn't get out. And the Bible called their conscience became seared. Don't you know you can continue to go back to a sin that would be such a demonic stronghold upon that mind that it would be almost impossible to escape? So the sin of Solomon and Gomorrah was so embedded in sin and God got tired of it because they would not come to true repentance. So God released two angels to go down there and demolish the whole city. Turn up! And to this day, that city is wiped off the map. You can't find it. It used to be there. This is not a parable, ladies and gentlemen. This is actual events. That city was totally wiped off the map. So God released two of his angels to go down. We get ready to read. Verse 1. It's kind of lengthy, so, so, so get ready to read. I told you we're going to use our Bibles today. Two angels arrived at Solomon in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gateway. Now, I must explain this because it's setting us up for the prophetic blessing. They're going to be released in this hour. Now, now, Lot was sitting at the gateway. In every city, it would have to be someone that sit at the gate to make sure that the enemies and people with leprosies don't come in that city. So the man that stood at the gate had to be very skillful in using his tools. He had to have the gift of discernment to know when someone was lying to him about trying to get in the city. So his job was to stand guard at the gate of the city to make sure that no one gets in. That was his duty. The two angels arrived at Solomon in the evening and Lot was sitting at the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. Now mind you, Lot did not suppose to let nobody in the city. But the man of God knew that there was angels. Certainly no angels should get into the place where Satan have his domain. How can you go into a strong man's house and spoil his goods and let you first bind up that demonic strong man? Lot did not suppose to let angels into that city. Watch this. Verse 2. My Lord, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insists firmly that they go down with him and enter the house. So he prepared a meal for them baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from, from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surround the house. And they called to Lot. Now, now, wait a minute. Let me explain this now. Lot, as he brought them in the house to feed them, he told his wife, listen to this, to go out and get some salt because the angel needed salt to season their food. And Lot had ran out of salt. So he told his wife, go out into the city and borrow some salt so they can season their food. You with me? Listen to this. Lot's wife did not have 
of her heart. Yes, she went to house, from house to house to borrow his soul. But her motive wasn't pure because she did not have a pure heart. God said, everything that you do is before my eyes. And I will examine every path a man takes. We may be fooling each other. You may be fooling Pastor Miller. But that's a God we serve that cannot be fooled by your interior motive, if there are some. Lot's wife, yes, she was obedient, but her motive wasn't pure. She went from house to house. But a real reason from going to house to house was to let them know that my husband have let someone in the city. Understand that. Let's read on. They called to Lot, verse 5, where are the men who came to tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can close your ears, kids, so we can have sex with them. Lot went, see how wicked they were? They were so bound in their sin, wanted to have sex with God's angels. Jesus. Lot went outside to meet them and shout and shut the door behind them and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do whatever you like to with them. But please don't do anything to these men, for they have come on the protection of my roof. Verse 9. Get out of the way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. Well, well, we'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. Verse 10. But the men inside, they reached out and they pulled Lot back into the house, and they closed the door. Then they, they, they struck the men with blindness, so they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here? Son-in-law, sons or daughter, or anyone else in this city who belongs to you? No, 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 no let, me, let me say this. Now, in my study, I found out that Lot not only had two daughters, but he also had two sons. But his sons were so engulfed in that sin of Solomon and Gomorrah, Lot said, well, I don't sin, and I don't think it's any use to go find them because they were so bound in their sin. What are you saying, preacher? We do not know, as possible, always state where grace begins and grace ends for ourselves. Understand that. Verse 13. Because we are going to demolish this place, the outcry of God against his people is so great that he sent us to demolish this city. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who, who planned to marry his daughter. He said, hurry, hurry, get out of this place because the Lord is about to demolish this city. But his son-in-law thought he was choking. 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and take your two daughters who was here or you will be swept away when the sin is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and led them safely out of the city. For the Lord was merciful unto them. Now merciful not unto Lot, but to the, to the, to the wife and two daughters. As soon as they brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee. Run to the mountain or you will be swept away. Verse 18. But Lot said to them, no, my Lord, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown mercy to me, sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountain. This disaster will overtake me and I will die. Verse 20. Look. Here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, it isn't, isn't it? D then my wife would be spared, and my life would be spared. Then he said to them, very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That's a whole other word right there. 
This is why the town is called Zor. But the time, but the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down. Watch this. Burning sulfur on, on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the city. They also, all the vegetation in the land, but Lot's wife, he, she looked back and became a pillar of salt. Let me explain this. Understand, when they were beginning to run, fleeing to safety, it was Lot and his two daughters running around about the same uh, marriage. They were about side by side, but his wife was lagging back. Why? Because her heart was still in Sodom and Gomorrah. She was looking back. It wasn't just a glance. She was longing to be there, be back there, and she was saddened. Now, understand, there was running by the Dead Sea, surrounded Dead Sea, her, were rocks of pillar because she was lagging back the rocks from the suffer as it was raining down on Sodom and Gomorrah it was a trembling and the pillars of salt began to roll down from the mountain that surrounded the Dead Sea and it began to cover her and killed her and that's why they said she became a pillar of salt because her heart was not right was not Right. Now, when they talk about the heart, what the Bible is referring to is the soulish realm. Again, the mind, the will, and emotion. But it's very close. It's like a synonym to, to the human spirit when the Bible speaks of. But it's mainly talking about the soul, the mind, the will, the emotion. Now, I'm getting ready to release this prophetic blessing, but I, I want to do the demonstration again because I want to take it a, a, a little deeper. So if I, I can get Martha, big preacher, let me get somebody deep, somebody. Now, I want to take this thing a, a little deeper that we know how Satan come at a man, come at a woman. I want to start with this by telling you this. The core of spiritual warfare is who you choose to receive counsel from and the power of your mind. It is either the voice of Satan with thoughts or it's the voice of the Lord. So whoever you choose to receive counsel in the power of your mind, that's warfare. Now God said, I want you to do this Again, and I wanted you to make it very plain. So, what did God do? Again, He woke me up at 521. And I prayed, got through praying, ran to Walmart. Because I want to make it plain. And I got some poster boards. And I said, Kelly, I need you to write this on these poster boards. Because they won't be able to read my right. And we got to make this real plain that even a child can understand it. That when that old devil come with his temptations, we need to know how he starts. Then here's the body. Well, no, you spit. I want you to stand real close. Real close. Can we see? Everybody see? Okay. We're going to make this plain. This is how we was born in God. This is how Satan attacks. Right here. Now, as I stated last week, this person here, this is the dissecting of you and I. Okay? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Taken from that pattern. Spirit, soul, body. This person is not saved, okay? This person here, the spirit, cannot hear from God, cannot understand God. First Corinthians chapter 12 tells us the natural man or the unsaved man cannot hear God. Neither can he understand God. Because God is spiritually discerned. So this person 
doing everything he want to do. Why? Because the spirit is dead. It's an old dead human spirit. It is followed by a soul that's blind. Understand? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 4. Satan has blinded the minds of the people who don't believe. The soul is blind. What's the soul? Who else were here last, last, last Sunday? Okay, we said the soul was the mind, the will, the emotions. The mind is the battlefield for the people. Say coming to attack the soulless realm. He can't read our minds, no. But he interjects thoughts in our minds. And he always do it with the first person, I. That originated from Isaiah 14. Remember when he was in heaven, he was Lucifer. And he wanted the very position that God had. He said, I would be like the more high. I will sit above the throne. Five times he said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. I called the five prideful, I will of Satan. And he's still using that same method today in our mind, starting with I. I feel like staying home today. Pastor Miller ain't preaching. I feel like staying home. I don't feel like going to Bible study. I don't feel like reading the word. I don't feel like praying. I'm going to cuss him out. I'm going to cuss her out. I feel like I want to have fornication, adultery, but you know what we say. So say coming to attack the soul, putting thoughts every second, penetrating the mind with ungodly thoughts. Well, since that man of God, since the man ain't saved, this spirit is connected to the soul. Following everything the body lead to. This body is made up of the five sensory. Hear, see, smell, taste, feel. This body is gravitated to the five sensory. Everything in the world, this body won't. Everything in, in Galatians 5 and 18, talking about the sin nature, the body won't. Profanity. Fornication, adultery, computer pornography, drugs, alcohol. This body won't it. What's stopping this body? Nothing because that man ain't saved. But the body don't know it is headed for a trap. From who? The father of lies. Satan himself. Well, as I said on last week, somebody been praying for this child. That child had a praying mother, a praying grandmother. Somebody been praying. This person got saved. Now the spirit is reborn. According to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart of man believed to righteousness, with their mouth confessing made to salvation. The moment they confess that with their mouth, believe in their heart, that spirit is reborn. Shh. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, live inside of this man. Now, somebody told me I almost pushed Jarvis down, so I'm just going to be gently. That was my son told me that. So the spirit, when he confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, Hebrew chapter 4 and 2 said, the word of God is alive and sharper and powerful to any two of their sword that person in between the stand of what? The soul and the spirit. So that word went so precisely and cut the spirit from the soul. Now God can speak to his child. You belong to me now. I want you, to, I want you to now read the word. I want you to go to church, find your church home. And I want you to go to Bible study. I want you to go to church. And I want you to follow me. He can hear God now. He can understand God. Even though he or she is a babe in Christ, they still got the ear to hear God. Now every time he began to read the word and go to church, this old soul was just the joint connector between the body and the spirit. The soul is the mind, will, and emotion. Every time the spirit of man, the man of God began to read the word, it's now transforming the mind of the soul. Be not conformed to this world any longer, but be ye transformed, how God, by renewing of your mind. So every time he reads the word of God, do I say brainwashing? Now, this old body... Nothing change. This old body going to die. 
from the same way it came from the dust. This old body would never be saved. So this body still want the world. Still want to fornicate. Still want to cut somebody out. Still want to lie and cheat. Still want to backbite. Ain't nothing good in the flesh. So now, you got a body just following the desires of his sinful nature, being pulled by the devil. You got the, the man of God, God whispering to him, and you got this old poor soul being a tug of war. This is what Paul said, that's a war inside of me. One member fighting against another member. This body pulling, my own fleshly nature pulling, and the spirit of God is pulling me. Now, the one you feed the most, that's the one going to win. If I'm not going to church, if I'm not reading a word, if I'm all day watching TV, if I'm all day on the computer texting on my cell phone, guess what? That soul going to the body. And what's happening to the spirit? The Bible says he's grieved and quenched. Now, also in the soul, the reason it's so hard for a lot of us to get truly delivered because there are so many voices in our minds. You got Satan over here. You got God trying to tell us this. We got friends telling us different things. We got to choose what voice would I choose to receive counsel from. And that would be from the Lord. We are a spirit that has a soul that lives in this old body. This body, the very one that I wash up, I clean up, but it's the very one I got to train. And what did Paul say in 1 Corinthians? He said, I beat this body daily and make it my slave. If we don't make this body our slave, this body going to make you its slave. So we got to buffet this body. How, preacher? Fasting, praying, coming to church. Well, I don't feel like it. Who are you obeying? The voice of the enemy or that of God? Now, God is seeking a pure heart. What the Bible referred to as a heart, he's talking about the soul. He's not talking about this physical organ that pumps blood. He's talking about the soul. This is the one we got to train. If we're not reading, if we're not studying the word, you're not training him. He don't know. He hears and he obeys. He hears from the Lord. Also hear the voice of the enemy through our sinful nature. And this is how Satan get us to sin by whispering in our ear. And if there's no resistance, you're going to follow your sinful nature every time. And if we don't turn, there will be a time where God said, I will have to give you over to a reprobate mind that refused to change. That's what happened to the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. God kept dealing with them by true repentance. And he had to give them over to what their body wanted. And we all know what happened. They were consumed in hell. Praise God. Give these brothers a hand clap of praise. Thanks, D. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, preacher. God is seeking for a pure heart. He asks, I will start with a question. Are you ready to meet for the Lord's use? He said, if so, remember Lot's wife. We know what happened to Lot's wife. And just as clear as you hear my voice, this is what God showed me. And this is what God want me to declare now that I have been released in this place. I would never stand before you to look for you, to, to impress you. I want you to look at me as some uh, deep or uh, 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 a powerful man of God. 
When I say God spoke to me, what I'm saying is he spoke his spirit in me. He didn't speak to me per se, but he spoke his spirit in me. And it would transform to my mind that of a divine thought. But if you're not reading the Logos written word, you don't know what the revealed word of God is saying. You hear what I'm saying? So it's imperative that we read the Logos written word that when my father speak that rhema word, I know it is him and not that of the enemy and not that even of my own voice. So God ain't telling us to read this word just because it's a church thing. No, you need to read to know how I will speak to you. So when I heard this, what God showed me. Now, I was April the 8th. It was the newspaper that Christian and Brian Rose was in. Christian was on the front page. Brian Rose was on the back page. And I went and I bought that newspaper. And Kelly read it, Rod read it, we read it, and I put it down on the counter. The next day, I got the paper, and, 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 I, and I'm going to throw it away, because I hate, I hate cluttering, and, I, and, I, and I, I had the paper over the trash can, but I was hesitant. I'm saying to myself, now, why, why am I hesitant about throwing away the old newspaper? I see Christian, and I see Brian at church, and I, I'll congratulate them. And so I went on and threw that paper in the trash. Well, got to work. And God started dealing with me about the newspaper. He said, you read the paper, but you didn't read the paper. He said, I want to show you something. So I, I, I called Kelly from work as he would talk to me at work. God talked to me a lot at work. And I said, babe, what date was that newspaper? And I woke up like I always do. I work third shift, shift home sometimes. I call at 1 o'clock in the morning. She said, uh, April the 8th. I think she gave me a date. Did you give me a date? She don't remember. She's asleep. But she did give me the date. So I ran to the computer room, and, and, and I got a commercial news, April 8th, and took me a while to find it. And I found it. And I printed it off. And I read it. I read the article about Christian. I read the article about Brian. And this is what I said. I said, God, what is you trying to show me? And God drew my attention to the title. And so I looked at the title. Danville Teen, seen on today's show. Now, this is before he went. Okay, then I read, I read uh, 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 the title of Brian. Filmmaker's life in India, in India like a dream. So God, what is it? God, I still don't see it. Read it again. Danville team to sing on today's show. And when I read it the second time, I heard national. Okay. Now, when I heard that, I already knew in my knowing, India is international. So I read Filmmaker's Life in India like a dream. So I said, okay. Danville with Christian national. Then Red Brian's international. God said, what's the common ground? Okay, okay. This is, this is Brian. However, Rose, a member of New Life Church of Faith. Okay, God, wait a minute. Okay, okay. So I went to Christian. And, and this, is, this is Dirk talking here. I guess they interviewed Dirk. His son is a keyboardist and singer at New Life Church of Faith. Okay, God, now I'm, up, now I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little nervous feeling. Okay, God, I'm, I, I, I'm about to fill it, but I don't want to go before you, God. I don't want to go before you. What are you saying? National, international, common ground, new life church of faith. Okay? When he said that, this is what he said, and I wrote it down. And I'm not saying I'm going to step and say God said and God ain't said nothing because I'll be held accountable for that. I wrote it down right here. And when I say I wrote it down, I ain't found in no book. I ain't heard no T.D. Jakes said nothing. <laughs> this is what he said. He said, this is my appointed time for my appointed season for a dimensional shift that have been birthed forth from my womb for New Life Church of Faith. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I, I, I can't leave you hanging. Appointed time. Because I, I said, God, what's appointed time? And I knew I couldn't get it from no dictionary. 
the, the dictionary language is just, it's just man, not God. So God's appointed time is a preordained time set before the foundation of the world to manifest his will. Okay, God, what's, a, what's an appointed season? An appointed season is God's supernatural intervention to manifest his will. What are you saying, God? A dimensional shift. For an example, David was out tending to his father's sheep, Jesse, his dad. Samuel went to anoint the king. He saw the first one, son of Jesse, and Samuel said to himself, surely this is the one right here. God said, no. He said, see, you look on the outside, but I guard just the heart. See the heart? So it was the eighth son of Jesse, little old rugged David. Dimensional shift. From tending to his father, sheep, king of Israel. Paul, killing saints. Going to Damascus, Damascus to kill some more. But Jesus knocked him down. So Paul went from killing the saint to writing one third of this Bible. Dimensional shift. So God bring it even closer. Pastor Miller and his vision from the living room to this heavenly square mall with the wealth of the wicked being released. The monies save a lot. The dollar store would have to mention a shift. Another example. Quaker Oaks. Right before I started working there, it was telling me we're getting ready to shut down. Everybody panicked. But there was a man, they told me, this is what somebody told me. It was the man that they all laughed at because he was going around laying hands on the wall and speaking to the atmosphere. And there was Elder George Rose. Dimensional shift from Quaker Oaks being closed to a multi-billion dollar company bought by PepsiCo. Let's bring it on in closer. Kelly Janine Puckett. Before she was an older, said, God, I'm not going to date no more. I'm going to rededicate my life to you. And the next man I date going to be my husband. Now she decided not to date no more. She decided to stop going to the club. Yep, she went to the club. And she decided to get back on track with God for real. And as she was praying for her husband, I was down in, in, in Grenada, Mississippi, still smoking crack. But the more she was praying, there had been a time I was in my daddy's bathroom crying out to be delivered from crack. And he delivered me from a former crackhead to preaching in multi pulpits in Danville, a dimensional shift. And she got her husband, dimensional shift. Give you one more example, and we're going to bring this thing on home. The man of God, body became ill, lost his job. Marriage was on the rock. The man of God decided to seek God continuously at this altar. Derek Cunningham. And look what God did. Job, marriage restore, everything's happening. The mental shift. Now God was giving me these examples. And what he's saying in this hour. Remember gateway locked? Standing at the gateway? He began to say, Pastor Miller is the gateway of this place. He have guarded my house, have not allowed the enemy to come in. I'm talking about his temple. Because if the man of God stand before us with a money gimmick or sleeping with the women, won't nothing happen. God said he stood at the gateway. And in, in the book of Micah 2.13, uh, uh, he did not let the enemy get through the gate. And God said, now I'm God. The spirit of the breaker now will break through past the gate of new life. Now I want you to stand to your feet. Come on, Chris, get ready. I want the band to get ready. God have broke through past the gate. He have given us examples. Give me some, y'all. Give me some. Slow rain. Give me some. He had broken past the gate. He said, I'm going to give you confirmation 
that my appointed time for my appointed season for a dimensional shift is already in your midst. God said, I have picked out two as a confirmation to show you that my shift dimensionally is in this place. For the Lord God said, I have shifted with your pastor from the living room to the small. But we have got so conformed to Pastor Miller that we looked at the man and not God and the man and what he have done. So God said, I would go back because the love I have for you, new life. And I would pick out two as an example to show you that I'm ready to take this place not only nationally, but internationally. Well, God, I know, God, everybody may not go nationally. And everybody, God, may not go internationally. And God, I can't sing. And I don't do films, God. And it's not my desire, God, to go nationally, internationally. But God said, what about your pastor locally? God said, I want to bring at my appointed time for my appointed season as a dimensional shift in your personal life. God is saying, I want to bring a dimensional shift for your children that are not saved. When God decides at his appointed time for a appointed season, understand it's not man's plan in man's hand. This is what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered to your hearts the good things I have prepared for you. A dimensional shift. I pay my tithes, God, but bills keep piling up. A dimensional shift from struggling with bills to a nova full of abundance. Where God, I've been praying for sickness in my body. And I am your man and woman of God. And I've been praying, God, but I still got sickness in my body. A dimensional shift. Sick on Sunday, but yet healed on Monday. A dimensional shift. What's a dimensional? It's the extent and the magnitude of a thing. Now I begin to ask God, Lord, how do you want me to declare this thing? This prophetic blessing that have already been released. He said, tell my people at the New Life Church of Faith and the ones that I was speaking to they hearing through you, son. He said, tell my people, watch this, to catch the horns of this altar. He said, begging my people to come to the altar. Come, come, come. Everyone, come, come. And God said, I want you to declare my prophetic blessing. For this is truly his appointed time. For his appointed season. For this dimensional shift. For the Spirit of the Lord has said, I have picked out from amongst you in your very living room, I have picked out a servant with a prayer heart. And I have taken him to the nation. And I have picked out another servant with a prayer heart. And I have taken him internationally. And God said, not only was there a common ground that had been planted at New Life Church of Faith, God said, both are prayer, both are virgins. Well, wait a minute, God. I'm no virgin. But God said, I have left you hanging. I have not neglect you. But he said in verse John 1, 9, if you confess that sin, I'm faithful and just to forgive you. And I, your God, will clean you up. When I say God spoke this, I'm not looking for you to look at me as some deep person. But I heard the voice of God. But we're living in a day for the spirit of pride have rose his ugly head and the spirit of jealousy have rose his ugly head but let me tell you something that's a trick from the devil to stop you from pursuing and manifesting God's purpose in your life man of God, woman of God that very thing you've been praying for 
that very thing you've been longing for to be delivered from the habitual secrecy that very thing struggling to finance healing in your body God said this is my time I have heard your prayers say God but your prayers have been attentive to my ears but what take it so long God I will wait for a pure heart because where God abides there can be no sin.